welcome to Kaylee's Rack and Reviews. Uh, today, just so you can get to know me as a reader a little bit more, I'm going to take you on a bookshelf tour of one of our many bookshelves. First off, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to my father-in-law who made these beautiful bookshelves for me. Uh, he's been making them for us every Christmas. Um, and he made the little baby bookshelf we have on top, too. So, with that said, let's get started. Also, look at this mug. It's really cool, and I'm drinking chai tea out of it. If you couldn't tell yet, I like dragons. So, we're going to start with the little baby bookshelf here. Uh, I'm using this for my TBR books. Um... I'm using the bottom shelf for this month, the middle shelf for the coming months, and then the top shelf is my books that I've already read for the month, which it's only the, the sixth, so I've only gotten one done so far. So this month, I am going to be reading The Black Flamingo by Dean Ada, which I should actually be done with this one by the end of today. And then I'll be reading The Ballad of Songs and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. And then I'm a lover of Mr. Rogers, so I have three small volumes of wisdom from Mr. Rogers. Um, I believe it was his wife who got these to be published, but here's one of them just to, just to look at. Where's my camera? There we go. I did it. Alright, and then we have, gotta tip the camera down, All Systems Read by Martha Wells. Tipping the camera down didn't work very well, so I'll just pull it out and show you. Um, I'm really bad at mirror images, so I apologize, but all systems read. On the second shelf, we have the Riverman Trilogy by Aaron Starmer. This is such a fantastic trilogy. Uh, I think everyone needs to read it. Uh, it's definitely my most loaned out series. Um, in fact, you'll notice there's only two books here. That's because I loaned out the second book, uh, The Whisper, and I don't remember who I loaned it to. So we've actually got another copy ordered that should be on its way soon, hopefully crossing fingers. But yeah, this is a fantastic series that everyone needs to read. Uh, next we've got the E. Schwab's Vengeful, uh, which is the sequel to Vicious. Onto the third shelf, we've got another Aaron Starmer book, The Only Ones. Uh, I have recently finished this book, so you can plan on seeing a review of it sometime within this next week. Really quick, I wanted to show you my knickknacks. Uh, in the back here, I've got some pictures of my loving husband and my nephew, and a spoon, uh, to showcase my love of whales. I've got my sperm whale here, and a plethora of dragons. Uh, this guy is Chip, because I dropped him, and he chipped, because I'm creative. And I've got this guy here. I actually painted both of them, which is why they're not super great, but I love them anyway. And then, again, to showcase my love of whales and dragons, I've got an orca dragon. Moving on to the top shelf, uh, I've got all of our really pretty additions here, uh, except for these three. They're not very pretty, but they're there anyway. Um, first, we have a very old edition of Alice in Wonderland from 1867, I believe. And then we have our Barnes & Noble's edition of Alice in Wonderland. We've got 
a treasury of Irish fairy and folk tales, and the complete fiction of H.P. Lovecraft, and a wrinkle in time down here. And fittingly, we have here hiding in the shadows little baby Cthulhu that a friend of mine made. He doesn't want to stand up very well, but he's going to, dang it. Uh, eventually, I would like to have fancy editions of these three here, but we've got the Wonderful Wizard of Oz, The Land of Oz, and Ozma of Oz, which are the first three books in the Oz series, uh, which I absolutely adore. Here we have A Little Princess. Uh, classic fairy tales from Hans Christian Andersen, Dracula, and then these are the leather-bound 10th anniversary editions of Sanderson's Warbreaker and Elantris. So these are the covers of those books. They are so beautiful. A lot of work was put into them to make them as beautiful as they are. Uh, this is the Warbreaker book, and it has some alternate cover art. I don't know if my arm's in the way here. Some alternate cover art from different countries here, which I just thought was really cool. And in Elantris, uh, the painting that inspired the story has actually been included. This is Passage Verge. By the way, that painting was done by Michael Whelan. Here we have M.T. Anderson's Feed, Howl's Moving Castle, which I adore, The Neverending Story, and a large selection of Ray Bradbury, who is my favorite author. Uh, I just want to highlight one of these books here, uh, just because I don't think you want to hear about every single one of my, my Bradbury books. But this is A Pleasure to Burn. It is a collection of all the short stories and drafts of Fahrenheit 451. So that's really interesting to look at, just to see how the story evolved into what we all know and love today. These are some of my non-fiction LGBTQ plus texts. This is uh, actually my primary focus as I work towards my master's degree in children's literature. This is my collection of Marie Brennan. Uh, this is primarily the Lady Trent series, so from here up. Uh, this, I love this series so much. It's a natural history slash fantasy type series, which I never saw before reading this. So it just, it warms my little heart. I love natural science memoirs, and so crossing that with fantasy is just perfect for me. This is The 57 Bus. It's a nonfiction narrative about a trans girl who gets set on her set on fire on the way home from school. And then, for some reason, I've got the Princess Bride surrounded by my E.B. White and my rolled doll. I don't know why. My organizational style is basically just Tetris at this point. And then, finally, at the end, I have some Barnes & Noble classics. And that's the end of my first shelf. Moving on to the second shelf here, this is my collection of Neil Gaiman books. Um, my dumb sister stole my favorite one, so I don't have it here to show you right now. Uh, but that one is Ocean at the End of the Lane. Uh, this here is the Gap Where My River Man series goes. And then I've got my Jacqueline Woodson collection, which I hope to be expanding. And here I've got an oldie but a goodie, My Father's Dragon. This is actually all three of the books in one. And here we've got my Mary Robinette Cole. 
she writes a lot of historical fiction mixed with fantasy and science fiction. And then we've got some David Levithan, Every Day and Someday, which are in the same series. Uh, the only one I'm missing is Another Day. Here I have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, which I have seen a lot of booktubers really hype up. So I'm super excited to read these. And then we've got Rin Shupeko's Bone Witch Trilogy. So far I've only read the first one, uh, but I loved it. So I'm definitely going to be reading the next two. Here I have my collection of V.E. Schwab, minus Vengeful, which is up on the TBR shelf, as you all saw. And then my Madeline Langles, Wrinkle in Time, and House Like a Lotus. And next I have Peter S. Beagle in Calibria, which he... This is a pretty, a pretty cover, you gotta see this. Um, he also wrote The Last Unicorn, which is near and dear to my little heart. Uh, unfortunately, I only had that one on loan from my sister, and she has since taken it back. I'm just going to blame her for all of my missing books. It's okay. We have ordered The Last Unicorn, so it'll soon be on my shelf again. I've got my collection of Cornelia Funk, The Thief Lord, and then the first and the third book in the Inkheart trilogy. I have no idea where the second book went. Next is my Gone series by Michael Grant. This is a dark take on a child-only community where the children start to develop supernatural powers. Like his wife, K.A. Applegate, Grant is not afraid to show the darker sides of humanity, and I think that's what makes this series stick out so much to me. Um, I have read all the way up to Light, which is where the original series ended, and then he's continued through uh, Monster, Villain, and Hero, which I have not read yet, but I'm really excited to. And then, at the very end here, where the shelf ends is where the sidewalk ends. Moving on to the third shelf. Yeah, one, two, three, third shelf. Uh, I've got my collection of Orson Scott card which I do believe all of these are in the Enders series. And I'm, I'm really lagging on this one. I've only read Enders Game, and I did really like it, but I just haven't gotten to the rest of these yet. Next we've got Lord of the Flies, a classic, and then another classic, The Handmaid's Tale, along with Atwood's new book, The Testament which um, just goes more into the world building of Gilead. Next is The Rise of Kiyoshi. I am a huge Avatar fan, so this was a really fun read for me. And then our poor, poor copy of The Chronicles of Narnia. This is all of them in the series, and it has been demolished not supposed to open up that way it's basically two pieces now so that's sad but we have it now let's see if I can put it back on the shelf there we go and then we've got Harry Potter which is self-explanatory next we've got my young wizard series by Diane Duane uh, this is one of my favorite series, and it breaks my heart that they are not all the, si the same size and shape, so they don't fit beautifully on my shelf like I want them to. Uh, this one is my favorite out of the series, number two, Deep Wizardry. A round of applause to whoever can guess why. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there it is, Deep Wizardry. It's harder to put these things back on the shelf than it is taking them off, let me tell you. Next we've got Kindred by Octavia Butler, and then Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, which was quite a hefty read, but I did it. Thumbs up. Um, 
There were parts of it I loved and parts of it I hated. Marius is a jerk and I'm going to leave it at that. And this is my Sanderson collection. Uh, here we have his Alcatraz vs. the Evil Librarian series, which I think deserves a lot more love than it gets. Uh, it is a middle grade series that really showcases Sanderson's ability to make uh, really strange and terrible powers really great. And then my favorite Sanderson book would have to be Warbreaker, so we've got another copy of that right here. And before people start asking, uh, yes, I do own Way of Kings. It's just not really my niche, so I didn't really want to include it on here, and I probably won't be reading it. So please don't hate me, but that's how it is. Moving on to the last shelf, I have my childhood favorite author, K.A. Applegate, Captain Applegate. Uh, the Animorph series is very special to me. Um, I used to own a lot more than I do now, but my stupid sister again, she took half of them when we moved out of our parents' house. But, uh... Animorphs is one of the series that, that really grew my love of reading, so it's got a very special place in my heart. Um, so we've got those, and then we've got the one and only Ivan and the one and only Bob, Crenshaw, and the Wish Tree, which are all fantastic books. Next is Lowry's The Giver, Gathering Blue, Messenger, and Sun. Here we have The Coral Island, The Metamorphosis, The Planet of Junior Brown, Dragon's Blood, and then we've got The Lies of Locke Lamora, which I've recently read, uh, which I had a blast with, mostly because I, I uh, love to imagine the ways that, that Sabatha is better than Locke and then getting that confirmation. Next we've got Jemison's The Fifth Season. And then Ari Burke's Death Watch, Lichway, and Missile Child, uh, which I haven't read yet, but I'm super excited to read these. Ari Burke actually teaches at my university, so um, it's just really cool to have books by someone that I know. Moving on, we've got The Bells, Winter Girls and speak. Then we have The God Box, The Kite Runner, Huxley's Brave New World, and The Founding Fathers of Fantasy, Tolkien, Campbell, and Mallory. Next to The Founding Mother of Science Fiction, Mary Shelley, who frankly I find to be much more compelling and a better writer than them. Next I have some more classics, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, the Time Machine and the Invisible Man, and what I do own of Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little House books. And then we've got The Rage of Dragons, which I have uh, seen a lot on booktube channels. So this, this uh, has come highly recommended, and I am really excited to get to this one as well. Next we've got The Girl with All the Gifts which I still need to read. I've, I've watched the movie on Netflix. I think the movie left, uh, left me wanting something a little better, so uh, I'm hoping that this is better. I'm definitely still going to read it. And then we've got the Uglies trilogy, Uglies, Pretties, and Specials, some Ursula Le Guin, Flowers for Algernon, and at the very end, we've got E. Nesbitt's Five Children and It. And that concludes my bookshelf tour. Uh, let me know what you're most excited about that you saw on my bookshelf, what I should be adding to my bookshelf. And uh, I'd also like you to note that, that there's some space on my TBR shelf. So let me know what I should add in there. Um, as a caveat, like, it's got to be able to fit on there. 
I'm not going to add a big honkin' book because I just don't have that time. So as long as it fits on that shelf, I can add it. Well, thanks for joining. Stay happy, stay healthy, and rock on.